Hello and welcome, I'm Adam with Push the Envelope, the channel that gives you everything artificial intelligence and machine learning. This is part three of our machine learning for Unity series. Last video we were able to get the agent to learn to hit a button to open a wall and reveal the final stage for the goal item. In this video we'll be expanding upon that, making multiple areas the goal can spawn, along with allowing the goal to move around the platform after it does spawn in. So without further ado, let's jump over to Unity and start coding that up. Okay, as you can see on the screen, this is where we left off the last time. The agent was able to learn to hit that button and get to the goal. Uh, now we're going to kind of expand upon that. So if you haven't seen the first two videos, definitely go check those out and get caught up to where we are right now. But for everyone else, let's go ahead and get started. So first thing we need to do, I'm going to delete these environments. And I'm gonna go into assets and open up that environment that we were working on. Um, now we do need all of these components, but we need to expand this a little bit. So um, I'm actually going to make the scale a little larger. I'm gonna go with a 10 by 10 platform in the middle. Uh, that's going to be positioned. I'm just going to reposition everything. So it's going to be at zero, zero, um, and the Y is going to be negative 0.5. I'm going to kind of just move things around to keep track of them all. Okay, um, I want the agent to spawn in the very center. So I'm going to put that position at 0 0.50. And um, I would like to surround the entire space with walls. So I'm going to make the Z 10. Um, the X for the position is going to be 5.5. And what I'm going to do, um, I'll just complete this actually. So I'm going to move the wall over as well. And this is going to be lined up here. So that's roughly 7.5 it looks like. And I need the Z to be zero, but I need the scale to be 10. Actually, I'm going to increase the size of this. Let's make it five. And let's go ahead and make this 8.5, it looks like. Yep. And the ball is just going to be somewhere in the center. So let's make it 8.5 again. Okay, so this is sort of what we're going to be looking at. Um, but what I want to do is instead of just having one of these, I want to actually surround the entire thing uh, with walls and platforms. So I'm going to copy both of these and go ahead and paste it in. And I'm going to swap it to the other side here. And I want to move this wall right in between. So this looks to be negative 5.5, which would put this at negative 8.5 it looks like and then we're just going to do this one more time so or two more times so go ahead copy paste that we do need to rotate these though so um this is going to be about the y so we're going to rotate those 90 This wall is going to be centered on x equals 0 and z equals 5.5. Let me rotate around whatever that is right there, which is 5.5. And this platform is going to be right behind it, which is at 8.5. And the x should also be around 0. Let me just make sure that this one's right. Here's to be. And one more copy. So copy those over on the other side. Move this over. Our Z is going to be negative 5.5. And for this one, it's going to be negative 8.5. Okay, everything appears to be right, and this is what we're going to be looking at. Um, so, just zooming out a little bit. We're going to have our agent in the center. The button is going to spawn anywhere in this middle around the outside of the agent. 
the agent has to learn to hit the button in order to drop down these walls and then the goal will spawn in on one of these little pedestals on the side now i am going to add one more thing i'm going to just take one of these platforms and copy it i do kind of want a holding area so i'm going to make this a two by two little platform out here And I do want to make the position, let's see, negative 8.5. Looks like negative 8.5 for each will work. And then I'm also going to move the goal over here as well. So make these negative 8.5. So here's sort of what I'm looking at. Um, the ball or the goal object is going to be sitting out here. And... It's going to stay out there until the agent is able to hit the uh, button. Once it hits the button, the goal will spawn on one of these little pedestals here, and the button will be replaced by the uh, the the goal will be replaced by the button out there. The reason I'm doing this, it will help your agent uh, learn faster um, because it doesn't have it doesn't have to go through all of the different um, sequences that will be there for different combinations of buttons and goals. So it will help it go faster. The other thing is it will know when the walls are down because the goal will no longer be at that specific point on the middle of nowhere. So two reasons for doing it, um, but the biggest being it will just help your agent train faster. You can do it just randomly spawning the goal right off the bat, but it will take longer to get to the final trained model. Okay, so this is what we are going to go forward with. Now we do need to go in and change the scripts. So on the scripts, we will open the move agent script. Let me get this back on screen here. And we are going to look at each of these uh, individual things right here. So uh, we are keeping all of these that are shown on top. Now we do need to add more walls though, because we only have one wall right here and now we have four down below. So I'm going to make, copy that down and we're going to do a wall one, wall two, wall three, and wall four. Okay. <clears throat> That will be good for now. Um, what we will be doing is an initialize. We need to make sure all the walls are up and we need to change where each of these positions are since they changed again. So the transform is going to be fairly easy because it should be at 0 0.5 and 0. The goal is going to start out on that platform, which was negative 8.5, 0 0.5, negative 8.5. The button is going to be in a random area. Now, this one does get a little harder, so I'm going to move this to the just below this wall because I want to do the walls first, and then we're going to look at how we actually need to do the button. But now instead of wall transform, it's wall transform one, two, three, and four. Okay, and it does matter which ones I add to each of these. So I'm going to save this here, let the script load. And going to close that. I need to open the script. I can't see it because I do have an error. Um, I'm just going to say starting at the bottom going clockwise, that is how we are going to do one, two, three, and four. Um, it's going to matter when we need to do the position. So um, one will be zero, zero, negative 5.5. Okay, and then position two 
is going to be this one, which is negative 5.500. Third one is going to be zero zero five point five, and the last one is going to be five point five zero zero. Okay, that takes care of our walls, initializing them. Now, what we need to do is if we look over here, the button needs to spawn all around the outside of this agent in the middle. However, it cannot spawn on the agent or else it's going to break. So we need to figure out um, where this thing can spawn in. So the first will be, um, if I look over at the side, it's going to be from 1.5 to about four. So 1.5 to four, the Y is going to be the same. And the Z is going to be from four to negative four. So it's actually going to be from negative four to four. Okay, so that is one potential area this thing can spawn in. Another potential area would be negative four to 1.5, negative four and four. Since it's a square, I should be able to come up with all the other ones. So, um, for these last two, the x is going to be from negative 4 to 4, and then these are going to change negative 4 to uh, 1, I think this is negative 1.5 actually. Let me just verify that on the side. It is negative 1.5. And then the other one is going to be 1.5 to positive 4. So those should be all the different areas. Just double check and those are good. Now, we need to uh, add some randomness to figure out which one of these areas that it can spawn in. So we're gonna make a float, we're gonna call it random. And it's gonna be equal to random.range. Zero, two, four. So this is going to generate a number between zero and four. So what I want to do is I want to say if rand num, and I do need to add parentheses here, but if it's less than equal to one, then we are going to assign it to this position right here. And I can delete that one now. I'm going to copy the first part of this if statement. Now, if the random number is greater than one and the random number is less than equal to two, then we're going to do this next one. And we're just going to continue on like that. So now if it's greater than two and less than equal to three is going to do this next one and for the very last one if it is greater than three we are going to go ahead and do this uh, last bit here um, i do need to close some parentheses And that should take care of all of it. Okay, so we have changed our where the agent spawns, where the goal spawns, all the walls are up, and then we are randomly assigning the button somewhere. And we are assigning the gate to be 
um, not open to begin with, which is exactly what we need. Copy all of this that we just did. And we're going to drop this down in on episode begin. Heuristics are going to stay the same. On action received is going to stay the same as well. Um, the only thing is we are going to add in some movement eventually. So we will add in um, not only changing where the agent is, but changing where the goal is. For now, uh, I won't do that. And we'll focus on getting uh, this initial thing done first. Collect observations still is going to be these three. Uh, now, like I mentioned, we have that hold platform, so we no longer need this gate open part. And then we have the triggers. So we do need to go up here where I have all of these walls. Instead of writing them all out, I'm just going to copy these down and right here where it says wall transform, paste all of those in. Now we do need to figure out what have or what um, position these are at when they're all the way down. So if I move down a little bit, that will be at Z equals negative one. Oh, sorry, that is a Y equals negative one. So keeping all of these same positions, it's just making these Y equals negative one. And that will put all of the walls down. And then the gate is open. So it gets the reward, the gates is open, and all of the walls are down. Um, if it reaches the goal, of course, it gets the 0.5 and it goes to the wind material. Same thing for if it falls off of the platform. Now, when it does fall off of the platform, we do need to change where the boundary is because it's no longer going to be covering everything. So backing out a little bit. I'm going to change, all right, so position should be on zero, negative 2.5, zero, that's fine. The scale does need to be bigger, so thinking 30 by 30 should cover it. Just making sure we should have enough room. Okay, so this is what it's gonna look like. I'm going to go back and hide that again and go back to the script. The only thing that we do need to do now is basically the same thing we did before. Go up here, copy this random number bit. But we need to do the same thing for the goal. So after the walls go down, we need to, instead of button transform, this is going to be goal transform. You go ahead and change all of those. Now we need to figure out what these positions are. So if I take our goal, again, I'm gonna start on the bottom. This is gonna be from negative four to four. And we'll start negative seven to negative 10. So this is negative four to four, negative seven to 10. And we do need to change these y's. So this is a positive 0.5. Now, if I can think through this correctly, this should be negative four to four, and this should be, uh, I did this one wrong. This is negative 10 to negative seven, and this one should be seven to 10. And it is, and it should just be the opposite for the Z. Yep, yep, so if I go back to the script, instead of this over here, this is going to be negative four to four, this is going to be negative 10 to negative 7. The other one's going to be 7 to 10. And the Z is going to be negative 4. 
Okay, so that is going to randomly put the goal on one of the platforms and it's going to randomly put it within that platform, whatever one it randomly picks. Okay. I think that may be everything. Oh, nope. One more thing. I do need to change. So, uh, button transform. Actually, I'm just going to go up to the top. If I look where I originally had the goal, that is where I need to put the button after it's pressed. So this is button transform local position is going to be equal to, you need to change the Y to 0 0.05, but other than that, that part is fine. All right, let's go ahead and run that and see if I have any errors. I do need to click on the agent and now I need to fill in all of these things. So like I said, I started from the bottom and worked my way clockwise. So hopefully I didn't rotate the screen too much. Uh, just to make sure, let me... All right, so my first wall transform was zero, negative one, negative 0.5. And I did rotate, apparently. So, looks like this is the one I was starting at. Let me just double check with the one after it. So number two should be negative 5.500. 0, 0. And negative five, yes, okay. So whatever this one is, is going to be the wall three is going to be my wall number one. Wall one is going to be my wall number two. Wall two is going to be wall number three. And wall is just going to be my last one. Okay, that will take care of all of those. Go ahead and save that. Move over, assets, I'm gonna throw the environment in there. My camera can see it, so I'm just gonna start with heuristics and see where we went wrong. Oh, uh, I do know where we went wrong. All right, so the Going back into the environment, the agent has a neural network associated with it, so we need to get rid of that. Um, if I go into behavior parameters, delete this neural network, and I want to go to default. Also, we are down to nine spaces instead of 10. Save that, and let's go ahead and try that now. Okay, I can move around. I hit the button, the walls go down, and the goal was spawned on one of these. I do want to make sure that I can't move through the wall on any of these ones. But it appears that we are good to go. Yep, and it randomly spawned down here this time. Cool. Uh, one more thing, I want to just make sure we can fall off the platform. And we can, perfect. Okay, so we are ready to go ahead and train this. now. This one is much harder to train than the last one. So we are probably gonna have to take this in slow steps. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to go back to our script. Now I know the, you know, the walls in the starting position, uh, or sorry, that's the bottom position. The wall right here, let me just separate these out. The wall is in the up position here. I want to, train the model initially with the walls down just to make it easier. So I'm going to replace the Y values with negative one. I'm gonna do the same down here for on episode begin. The other thing I wanna do is now that the walls are down and let me 
jump into assets in the environment. Let me just actually put the walls down. Okay, another thing to make it easier is I do want when the goal spawns in, right now it's being stopped by the wall, but since the walls are down, I do want it to kind of like move over a little bit. So I think I'm going to do negative five. So that would be, not sure what it's stopped at right now. Seven, so two over. So I'm going to add padding of two. So I'm going to define an on trigger enter. Okay. On trigger enter, not only do I want to do a random number, but I do want to do a uh, float offset equals 2f. What this is going to do is it's going to allow me to go farther in to the um to the area closer towards the agent and it's going to allow the agent to accidentally hit the goal more often so if i come into here um anywhere is not negative four and four is where i need to adjust it so i need to add the offset here And I need to subtract the offset here. On this one, I need to add the offset. And on this one, I need to subtract the offset. And that should work for me. Go ahead and save that. And we will, let me see, offset does not exist. Okay. It's because I spelled it wrong. Go ahead and save that. We're going to run this again just to make sure the walls are down and the goal can spawn on the walls. Okay, the walls are down. If I hit this, I'm gonna have to run this a couple times just to see. Yep, it does. Okay, so it's spawning closer to the walls than normal, and it hopefully will allow my agent to accidentally hit it more often. Okay, with all that being done, I will. Um, I'm trying to think if I want to show the agent running around first. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and train it first uh, just to show you what it will look like. If you go back, uh, actually, let me duplicate the environment a couple times. Okay, let's run with nine of them. And we are probably going to have to adjust our camera. That will put all of them in the view. OK, um, now we're going to go over. We are going to run test five. This one probably will take a while to train. So just keep that in mind. Uh, it is listening. And I will go ahead and hit play. Okay, so it's learning, uh, trying to figure out what to do. We will let this run for a while and sort of see what happens. Hopefully it will learn the correct behaviors. It looks like it already did on one of these. So um, let me pause the video and I will come back and we will take it from there. Okay, after 500,000 iterations, it stopped. Uh, it stopped after 500,000 because we did not change the configuration file to go any longer. So max steps was 500K. 
But that's all right. Uh, as you can see, it was trending upward, um, but it was trying to break past 0.5 and couldn't quite do it. Uh, I am confident that if we let it train longer, it would go up to one. Um, but instead of continuing to run this one, let's go back to the code and add some more things into it. Um, so let me pop open the code. What I want to do is actually, let me go back to unity and I'll show you under assets, go to environment. Okay. Here is what we're looking at, right? And when we have our ball spawn in, it's just in one stationary position. But what I would like it to do is whatever pad that it spawns on, I want it to kind of run around, um, but I don't want it to go past the wall and I don't want it to fall off the edge. So we're going to make some dumb logic for this and have it go in one direction until it hits a wall and then go in the opposite direction and then just kind of constantly do that. Almost like the screensaver you see on like a DVD player or something that used to have that bouncing around the screen. So let's go open the code. We're gonna need some values at the very top that we're gonna have to initialize. So we're gonna make a whole bunch of floating points for the X minimum value. We're going to initialize these to zero to start off with, but I'm going to copy this, paste it three more times. So we're going to have X min, X max, Z min, and Z max. I also need a float for random X. You'll see what this is in a second. We're going to initialize that to one and a float for random z and again initializing it to 1f okay <clears throat> so what do we need to do well these values right here for the x min and x max are if we jump back here are going to be the minimum maximum values that correspond to this box that it can run around in so we need to set those as soon as it spawns in uh, i'm trying to find my right screen here there we go. So um, it's not going to happen until we go down here to on trigger enter. And when we spawn in the goal, this is where we set our minimum and maximum values. So in here is where we are going to go ahead and assign the true X min X max, Z min, Z max. So X min is going to be equal to, in this case, the first part is the X. So negative four F uh, X max is going to be equal to four F. Z min is going to be equal to negative 10 F. And Z max is going to be equal to negative 7f plus that offset value. I am going to copy this because we're just going to keep repeating this process. I'm going to just go ahead and right now copy it down to all the other ones. Okay, for the next one, negative 4 and 4 stay the same. However, this one is going to be 7f minus the offset and the max is going to be 10f. Moving down, x min for this one is negative 10f. The x max is negative 7f plus that offset. And going to the z is going to be negative 4 to 4. And the last one is going to be 7f minus the offset to 10f. And then from negative 4f to 4f, positive 4f. Okay, so that gives us the real values of the x max and x min. Now we need to actually do the uh, motion of, um, uh, of moving the thing around the platform. So on action received, Right after we change the position of the transformer, we're going to go ahead and say if the gate is open, then we are going to start moving the object around because we don't want the object to move around if the gate's not open because it's on that little uh, standby platform. 
So I'm going to create a float called uh, ran speed. It's going to be equal to one. Now, kind of important is this speed needs to be less than the speed of the uh, agent because we want the agent to be able to catch up to it. So while the agent can move at three, the ball can only move at a speed of one. All right, so now we have to do this big if statement. So the first part of the if statement is if the goal transform, got to learn to spell it, right? Okay, if the goal transform dot local position at zero, this is going to give us the x position. So I want to know if the x position plus whatever we're about to do to it. So rand x times the time dot delta time. It's a capital T. Uh, times ran speed. Okay, what is this saying? This is saying if the current x value plus the step that we're about to make, if all of that is less than uh, matching my parentheses here, less than x min, Okay, so I want to know if it's less than x min or I'm going to copy this. I got to make sure my parentheses are right. I don't think they are. Uh, let me see. Goal transform, random speed. Okay, yep. All right, so now the next part is if the same thing, but if it's greater than the max, depending on what uh, what direction we're going in. So the goal plus the random x times delta random speed is greater than the max, then we're going to do something about it. What this means is... If the value is less than the x min or greater than the x max, we need to reverse directions. So we're going to say rand x times equals negative 1. So reverse the direction of rand x. I'm going to copy this. And we're going to do the same thing for the z. So goal, except for it's going to be at position 2, is going to be equal to the rand z is equal or so is less than the min the position at two rand z is greater than the z max that's going to say rand z is equal to negative one now we just need to update the position so local position plus equals new vector three rand x zero rand z times time dot delta uh, de delta time times rand speed. Okay, I hope this all makes sense, but we are, every time it hits a wall, it's reversing in the direction. So whether it's the x or the z axis, reversing the direction so it doesn't fall off the map or run into the wall. Uh, after all of that is set and we figure out which direction it needs to move in, then we update where the goal is going. And we should be able to save this. And I think that is all we have to do for this. So let's go ahead and run back to Unity. Okay, move agent already contains x max. So this is right here is supposed to be z max.
Uh, looks like I spelled Delta Time wrong in one of these. Um, Delta Time, Delta Time. Ran Z does not exist. As a capital. It looks like it, this one took. Okay, it looks like it is error free now. Let us go ahead and just run heuristics. All right, I'm going to look at the bottom center one. Yep, and so it is moving around the platform. And it is hitting our imaginary walls. Okay, let me uh, see some of the other ones here. Just going to try to get a whole bunch of them going. All right, but you can see they are running around. Uh, um, you can up the speed if you want to, but again, you want to try to keep it lower than the actual speed that the agent can run. And also when you're training it, it does speed it up. So it will look like it's going faster. Okay, I'm going to stop that. Now we're going to get ready to train again. Okay. Um, before I do this, I do want to update my configuration file so that I don't stop early again. Uh, so in your project, go to config, move agent. This is the YAML file that we created. And down here is your max step. So I'm going to create uh, the max as 2 million, and then I'll stop it early if it converges fast. Um, yep, yeah, so go ahead and change that if you want to. Now, uh, we're going to call this one run ID test 6. We're going to add one more thing in here going to be initialize from so dash dash initialize if I can spell it right initialize from and then say equals test five in my case so I want to initialize and I think this is lowercase from the previous one that we just trained so this is transfer learning so I'm going to take what I learned from the last one and apply it to this one to hopefully converge to the answer quicker um, we'll see if it actually works that way All right, it's listening. Okay, and it is trying to figure out what to do. So I am going to let that run again. If you want it to go faster, I suggest just stepping away for a second, but turning off the camera so it's not trying to render the scene the whole time, and then hopping over to... Um, TensorBoard to see the graphs. And I'm going to turn off five, and we're looking at six. I probably don't have anything on the board yet. Yep. So uh, I'm going to come back after this trains for a little, and we will end out the video and see how we ended up for the training. So stay tuned. Okay, as you can see on the screen, you can see my training over time, and we are approaching one. So now what we can do actually is, uh, first let's take a look at how our training is going. And you can see, for the most part, we're going and in intercepting the sphere. Now, it definitely can do a little better uh, as far as going directly after it instead of like this where it's kind of chasing around and eventually hits it. But um, one thing we can do is if we go back to our code, we do have this offset value still set at two. So if we go ahead and just get rid of the offset, this is gonna be a more realistic environment. You can save that. And what's gonna happen is the script's gonna load. All you have to do is once it loads here, hit the play button to stop the training and then immediately hit the play button again. And it's just gonna resume right where it left off. And we should be good to go on that. Now I'm gonna let this train for a little bit longer. I'm gonna jump back over here. Um, once I see it stay at one for a while or really close to one, I will actually stop it. And then um, we can go ahead and put the walls up. So let me 
it may be good right now. There was one that missed. Yeah, so I'm actually going to go ahead and do that right now. So while it's still training, let me turn off the camera real quick. Um, but we're going to go back to our code. And the thing we have to do here is now we have to actually use the walls. So uh, wherever it says wall transform, we need to change this to zero. That is going to put the walls in the up position. So we want to do that on the initialize and we want to do that on the on episode begin. And just to make sure if we scroll to the bottom, the walls are now lowered when the gate is opened. So that should be working. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and save here and go back into Unity. Let that script load and again do the same thing. Hit the play button and then immediately hit the play button again. Okay, as you can see, the walls are up and the button is working to put them down. So uh, we should see, and you can continue training like this. Um, what will happen is if it does not lower the walls, then it will be stuck on the wall and it will only receive, but well, won't receive any reward. So um, eventually it will learn to continuously hit that button. But for the most part, uh, this looks pretty good. Again, you can continue training it. I'll probably just train it a little bit longer, but for this video, that's all I'm gonna do. Um, I'm hoping you got something out of this, got something out of this series and how you can use Unity and a little bit about how reinforcement learning works. There's a lot more you can do. This is just scraping the surface. So uh, definitely check out Unity, check out the ML Agents package and some other videos that are out there of what you can do with this kind of stuff. Uh, one of my favorites is someone created a dodgeball game within Unity and the agents learn to play as a team and uh, play against an opponent team as well. So uh, definitely go check that out. Uh, if you got anything out of this, definitely like and subscribe to the channel. Check out some other series I have and uh, I will see you in the next video.